I feel like what always has to be the main priority is climate change. It's not something that's coming. It's not something that's around the corner. It's something that's already here. Coal is a finite resource. It's gone. Coal is gone. Man, this is the 21st century, you know? And, and you know, we're burning our planet up, man. I don't want to get all into that scientific stuff and all that, you know? But, hey, man, it don't take a brain surgeon to figure out, man, what's happening, man. This long oil sands boom, which has lasted the better part of 15 years, is coming to an end because the price of oil has flatlined. They're in the process of moving towards drilling platforms that will be entirely unmanned. The transformation of the industry that's already in the process of eliminating hundreds of thousands of jobs. Ultimately, they are shipping tar sand oils out of the country as quick as possible so that they can realize a profit before that industry collapses. A really important component of their pipeline too is that they're starting on indigenous land and they're gonna end in a historic African-American people who want this pipeline or talk about this pipeline, they'll say to me things like, you know, where you're going against progress. Progress would be finding out a way to move forward and, and to continue to have your lights on and continue to have food on your table and continue to be able to clothe your children, but not destroy their air and their water and their legacy. When it comes to environmental impacts, nobody has been impacted more than people of color because we were the ones traditionally and historically placed in areas that were deemed unsafe to live. Next to the wastewater treatment facilities, next to the refineries, next to the chemical plants. People are sick. People have respiratory problems, they have illnesses that I had never heard of before I started to work around here, and they have a lot of cancer. My members are feeling guilty to work in the oil sands. So what we're looking for is position. And we can say, yes, we can be on that side. It's only people who come from privilege who can actually be so bold as to say we gotta shut it down. Those of us who come from the working class know what it's like to struggle. And so we have to be thoughtful and mindful about how do we create those opportunities when we're moving people from one economy to the other. We're trying to organize a movement of movements where we can holistically transform our reality, the way we're governed, the way we govern ourselves, the way we choose to be in community with each other, our relationships to industries and practices, to rethink and reimagine all those aspects. Together, we are trying to advance what's called a just transition. What we realized really quickly was that everybody could articulate where they would go if. If they had more money, if they, you know, had a better job. That's how we started, like, saying, okay, well, you know, if they can see what their ideal place would be, well, why not start organizing with that, saying, like, look, you know, we can own this space and we can start to create what we can see. It's about having that conversation first, then educating ourselves on what the issues are, and then coming to a conclusion collectively on how to solve these issues. The worst thing a capitalist society can do is leave people alone to figure it out, because then they figure out they don't need you.